Hey, all right. We're back to working on this game. Uh, hey, that's right. So where were we? Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, you might have noticed this is not Unity. This is a little different. But I bring it up because the next thing that I want to get into... Well, I was already into it. Um, I just kind of took a, a bit of a break to work on all that collision tile stuff. But today we're not doing that. Um, going to have to come back to that at some point too because it still needs a bit of tightening up. But I bring this up, RPG Maker 2003. Well, there's, of course, later ones, but this is the first iteration of this program that I really loved. 2000 was pretty good. This one just really improved on it. And then the later ones, I don't know, I'm, I, they're okay, too. Um, but uh, this one had, like, the side view battle system. It was really cool. Um, so I bring this up because there's a feature of this editor that... I really love and when I first saw it I'm like this is great how did they really do this it uh, and it's their their event system so events I mean event system means a lot of things in a game it could it, it could mean passing messages back and forth between modules things like that but events in this case are like they're like a scripted sequence um, for example this when you step on this square you just teleport to a different map um, it, just each item here, just like a different thing that can happen in the sequence. Um, so I was like, okay, there's a lot of flexibility you can do with this. So I can just make a new one and like, I can give it any kind of graphic and you know, blop. And uh, like, it's only, it, maybe I can make it only show up if a certain game state is applicable. There's a bunch of conditionals, like if you're holding an item, you know, things like that. Ways to trigger it, so once it's even on the map, do you, does the character have to talk to it? Can you just touch it? Uh, is it automatic if it's just anywhere on the map? Um, and then just a lot of other little things. And then so that's to make the event even go. And now each step of the event can just do a whole bunch of things. I mean, message just a standard, like, dialogue box uh and like a choice uh that's not that that is there's choice oh yeah so show choices yeah uh just a whole lot of stuff change the game state change a bunch of graphics start a battle uh really just do anything and just have it be like you don't even have to program it i mean if you did that would be fine i mean that's that's what i am i'm a programmer i can program things um, but what's nice about this system is like, you, you don't have to, uh, it, it kind of makes it quicker to, to actually put down sequences of stuff happening. Um, like, so you don't actually have to code stuff and then like compile it and then have the, that script run. It's more like, you know, just, just make stuff, do stuff. I'm like, okay, bam. And then. This won't really make any sense. Open the shop window, uh, make the screen, you know, I don't know, that color over one second, and then pause and then go to the next thing. So I saw this and I'm like, this is really great. Like, how do they, how do they make this? And like, I want to do that because if you think this is how you basically you make cutscenes in an RPG and that's, that's what I want to do. Um, and so... That's what I tried to do. I'm trying to do in Unity. I'll just kind of get rid of this. So that's, now we're back. Um, so as an example, um, like I have this uh, NPC here. He's not anywhere right now. Uh, oh, there he is. See, it's Danny Phantom. And when you talk to him, actually, can I? If I run the game right now, will he even be there? I should have tested this before. <laughs> oh, there he is. Oh, okay. Ugh. Yeah, his graphics aren't... Uh... But does he even... I think he should do stuff. Oh. No. Okay. 
Oh, I gotta, I gotta change things. <laughs> I do have, I do have some of his. So what you're supposed to do is when you talk to him. So this is kind of what I was trying to do. That RPG Maker had like different event pages, and then yeah, a trigger. You know, do you have to? Does it happen as soon as the level is loaded? Do you have to go near him? Do you have to talk to him? And then in this case, do you have to attack him? Um, and then, you know, conditionals. So I can just say different, just various things in the game state. There's going to be a lot more of this. Um, different things to check. And then, you know, so yeah, basically just different different things about the game state to check to see if this is even, if the event will show up. Um, and then a bunch of uh, steps. So this is like each one of those things, each one of those things you can add to the event in RPG Maker. Each, you know, out of their, their whole pages and pages of things that events can do. Um, so like I can say, right now I only have, what, eight you can make the event wait. You can throw up a dialog box. You can throw up a dialog box with choices. You can make a character jump. You can make him face a certain direction. You can change the game state. One of the... This is basically like RPG Maker variables. You can change maps. And this one I'm working on now. Um, it's actually not going to be Legacy Animate. I was trying to use the Unity's old animation system. And then I said... Uh, I'm not going to try and do that, plus the Mechanim new stuff. I'm just going to have everything do the Mechanim style animations. Um, it might be a little bit overkill for for a lot of things that animate in this game, especially when they don't really have many states, but just for the sake of consistency. Um, so I can... The, right now I have these, but I'm going to... It's eventually going to be almost as many as they're in RPG Maker, so which is like a hundred... I don't know. <laughs> However many I think is necessary. But um, So the way that this sequence would go down, it doesn't really work right right now because I have to change the, the resolution of the text. <laughs> These are his choices right now. He's asking what your favorite fruit is. Um, and it's just, it's the wrong size because the game used to be at a different resolution. And now I, I downscaled it, but I didn't downscale the UI, so... Um, that will be a thing that I'll do. Maybe I'll just do that in time for next session. Um, but he asks you that, and then depending on what your choice is, then the event will go to like a different event page. So if you say banana, he's like, oh, okay, that's my favorite. And then he will set, he will set his state basically back to page, uh, back to yeah, this event page zero. So then he'll just kind of go back here. Yeah, the pages are actually off by one. I mean, page one is index zero, page two is index one, that kind of thing. Um, this is like a primitive way of me just having him ask you stuff and then goes to different... Uh, let me get out of this now. Let's see if I have a better example. The one I'm working on now, for example. The, and these are just really quick, small little events, a little sequences. For example, all this one does, it only has one page when you talk to it, uh, which really means, like, you know, get in front of it and press the talk button. Um, it will happen all the time. There's no condition on it. It will lock your input, so you can't do anything while the event's happening. And, okay, so here's what I'm working on. So what, what I wanted to do is to animate itself open and then warp you outside the house into the outside. Um, and this is, it's all custom inspector, custom editor stuff, which is why, so I'm, I don't have it all done yet, so it's like, yeah. Um, that's what I'm in the middle of. I started doing that, uh, yesterday, something like that, and, uh, okay, so here we are. Here's the custom editor code, and what this is going to do is... When you have an event, it will, hang on, here we go. It'll play an animation on it. So just to make it, you know, basically make it do stuff, make it look like it's doing stuff at least. Um, 
what this would look like. So here's the door. And here's what it should do. It's like, wah, wah, wah. it should open when I talk to it. Um, I'm going to just turn that off for now. Um, and then the next thing is it would do a teleport. Um, okay, so the UI is messed up, so it's not really showing me anything. So I'm going to go fix that right now. So here we are in the animate step. Like each, each thing that an event can do, each of the, one of those like selections, that's what I call like a step. So whether it's throwing up a dialogue box, whether it's, you know, doing a screen shake, playing a sound effect, these are all steps. This is animate. There's kind of a lot you can do with this actually. I'm, I'm introducing a lot of potential parameters because with Mechanim to make stuff animate, you can just say, yeah, like play, play an animation, just do it. But you could also like, mess with the animation state machine by sending it parameters of different values to kind of you know it can make it speed up slow down or like branch depending on what the data is if, if you go from one state to potentially several so i mean i don't really need to implement all this right now but i'm just gonna in fact i'm, I'm not i'm not gonna do the wait until done it's kind of annoying to do it, the mechanism animation states, unfortunately. Uh, I'm gonna do it, just not tonight. Um, right now I just need to draw all the UI properly. First thing. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Just, cause, scroll through what I have here. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Page, yeah, 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 let me, I called it Legacy Animate, I just want to rename it to Animate. Yeah. Okay. So, the things that this can do... Pretty much from from the event script, from building it out in the inspector like that, I can say it can do one of two things. It can either change state, go right to a particular animation state, or um, just set a parameter in the animator, and then the animator will decide if it's going to go to another state or not. Um, so this one, eh, I don't even know if I'm going to use it, but I kind of just want that there. Um, yeah, so anyway, so I have to actually have to put up UI for all this stuff. Um, when I was doing, when this was like the legacy animation, it controls differently. So I had a different UI and now I'm going to go like, no, I don't want to do any of that. Um, so anyway, we do have this instruction type. So what do we want to do? We want to go to a particular animation or just, or send it a parameter. Um, and I think, I think that's going to be object field. No, that's going to be property field. Why is the cursor a finger? Okay, that was it. We're gonna say... Uh, instruction type, right? That was what I called it. Yep, instruction type. And depending on what they picked, then the UI below it is going to change because some of those parameters are not.
Okay, I actually kind of want to know how to get the result of this right now. Um, it, it throws up the UI, it sends the result inside serialized property. It must end up in here, o.findProperty. Like, I want to change the UI below it depending on it. Like, if you select change state, for example, then I, don't, I, I pretty much only want to show these. And if it's set param, then show these. But then because this is a property drawer, I got to get like, I have to get the result of this. Um, actually, let me just look it up really quick. Um, that's, that's just how I learn Unity, just searching things. field. Okay, so I can... Serialize property. Now I should be able to actually uh, should be able actually to turn this. Uh, I have to somehow get this from a serialized property to what it actually is. The instruction type enum. that uh, serialized properties they're 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 a kind of a temperamental thing I found Just bring this over here and show what I'm searching. Um, uh, so, like, okay, you get the target object. Now, let me just. See, people like have to like do weird workarounds and stuff for things that you think would already be. and then you have to 
I don't want to do that. Do you really? Oh, no, 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 no. You have to, like, get the object and then pull the member off of it. You can't just... That's what I was afraid of. No, or or this. Or this. Let me just take my chances with this thing. I cannot can I even do that? I don't like this. The cursor gets stuck as a pointer. public it just seems so much more than you think you would need to do uh, can you really not do that just can't oh that only works with nullable types just basically do like the and then kind of I just like doing it this way okay does this make any kind of sense um... Um... and then pretty much that so right if it is change state I'm asking it for three things which are also going to be property fields Name of the animation, name of the layer, and the normalized time. So, uh... All right, well, I gotta get the names right of these. State name, layer, normalized time. I'll, I'll play around with the, uh, well, why not just do it now? It's going to be two, this is going to be at three, at four, at five, down. Uh, set param. And we're going to do, um, This one's got more to it. It's going to be a uh, param type, param name, param value. They're all strings because they'll just be cast it from string to whatever um, and then there's that wait until done but I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that yet that's definitely something that I'm gonna want implemented obviously you want like if you're if you have like an, a sequence going on and there's a character doing an animation you might just want to wait until he's done with this particular animation before you continue doing whatever's next like more dialogue or something else um um 
I mean, I could just add it anyway. It doesn't hurt. Uh, these go away. Um, okay. So it is seven lines long. It always starts at one here, and then we have two, three, four, five, and six. All right, um, this might work. <laughs> I'm just, I'm making a big assumption with this, this stuff going on here. This is a, um, all right, editor, what do you say? Uh, steps. Yeah, okay. See, so this is my, this is my UI so far. Okay, and even those like, little tool tips. Um, and then I could like add an extra step after this. It's like, wait, throw up a dialogue box, do more stuff. This is what the door is supposed to do, by the way. This is the door. Uh, I'll just show him just to be more clear. Okay, that's the door. So when I have the character talk to it, which is just to, just like interact. I could just put say interact change state or if I say set param oh no why uh wrong that doesn't work what's going on here what's going on here indeed because if I if I go back to change state yeah these are okay Uh, I'm not, I'm going to do change state right now for what the door is supposed to do, but I, I gotta, I gotta know why, why did, uh, why did the set param not do what I wanted? Those are all the right property. Yeah. It's blank blank. Oh, did I need to put... Oh, I need... Hmm, no. Is it because I have the text areas here? And I don't have that for here. I don't think... I think you only need that text area designation if it's, like, more than a, a single line. I might have just confused it. So if I say... Yeah, all right, okay, yeah. Only use that text area, header, or prefix, whatever, uh, if it's more than one line of input. Since it's just one, I don't need that. Okay. Works for me, I'll, I'll check that one later. For now, I wanna say, go to the open state, because as we can see in the animation states, he starts out idle and he goes to open, but I have this trigger. I could just, so I could, I could fire the trigger, the open trigger. And, and then have the animation state machine say, okay, now that that trigger was hit, go to the open state. Or I can just say, go to open, even if there's no transition here. Uh, which way is right? Uh, I mean, it's debatable. Um, but anyway, here we are. So right now, I just want to say... Yep, go to open the layers, negative one, normalize time zero, meaning just go at whatever your normal time is. That's what that should mean. That's what the documentation says. And then the next thing is to yeah, teleport. 
Um, and the details here, it's like you can go which map, which X, Y at that map, do a transition. Um, yeah. I think right now I'm going to say pixelate. That's not what I want. It's kind of like the... I was using it to test something else. Let's just see if it does it. Uh, and then I have wait till done checked. I don't have it implemented though. Because it's like I can't... I'm going to have to figure that out. For now, let's not wait until done. Let's just do both these things at the same time. Yeah, apply it to the prefab. Disable it. Apply that to the prefab. So that the prefab starts out disabled. And then the level will enable it. Um... Hmm. Do I not have it? Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, no, it wants to be... What I just said is false. It wants to be disabled in the scene, but enabled in the prefab. So that when it's instantiated, it's enabled. So now, if I... It's hard to tell when I'm talking to something when I press the talk button. Um, but it would just be, so I press C. Uh, it doesn't quite work. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> so, all right, so that happened. Oh yeah. So, oh. Uh. <laughs> I can't really, I don't think I can get out of here. I can. Yeah, the reason why he's jumping so low is because he still thinks he's inside. Yeah, I mentioned this a while back, um, but the, uh, the level data doesn't actually save <laughs> whether it's an indoor or outdoor level. That's dumb. That needs to be fixed. Um, that's, that's neither here nor there right now what i wanted to do now the next thing i want to do so the door opened and then it did the transition that's good um now i, I do want to do that wait until done thing But the thing about that is it's it's not super straightforward when to tell when to tell when a certain animation state is done. I wish it was. Um, and the reason why, oh, excuse me. Right, so I'm just doing a search here, and like already you can see why. Um, like a bunch of people are asking like how to do this. This is even from a few years ago. Apparently, so this answer was. This one was like, tell if, uh, 
compare state names and just like like there's no callback for when it's done it's annoying this one says use events on the animation clips i don't want to do that i don't want to do that Detect an animation's end. Like, is this one any? This is even older, though. So he's using Mechanim to control it. This one says use animation events. Oh, so you can tell normalized time. Hmm. But the problem is, I think as soon as you do something with the animator, like we say this, animator play or animator set trigger, this doesn't happen until like next frame, I think. So you can't really get its current state and compare it, you know, to something. Uh, where did I see that? Um... <laughs> Smelly, yeah, it is. You can use a state machine behavior. Yes, you can do that. Um... any of these solutions. Okay, like, this might be interesting to me. Oh. Nope, that's not useful to me. See, there's, like, there's nothing really good to tell. Um, there's... There's animations, like, I can just throw, like, a... Put, like, an animation event here. It's just, I don't know, like, they're, they're kind of just, like, very global things. You can't really tell, like, which animation references which functions, um... They're like they're a weird way of communicating. I don't I don't love it. I don't even like it. Uh, and then you could make animation state behavior classes, which I did we did a while back for the ledge grabbing, but it just seems like kinda overkill. It's like, hey, all I wanna do is just wait till the doors open. I don't want to make state behaviors for every single little object that animates in the game. That is that is not the point of this. Um, so what I could do... I mean, I, that's why I added a wait state, but I, I don't want to add a second state for this. I just want to... See, the old legacy way, I can just tell how long 
the animation clip is because it used animation clips instead of animator states and then just and then just like offset the current time and, and do something like this that was okay I mean not not that elegant but it did, did the job um, let me confirm my suspicion um, Animator.get current state animator state info. Yeah. Like I feel like if it's negative one, I gotta let me look up in the documentation this thing. If I put negative one, it should just be whatever the current state is, the current layer. Um, hey, tell me scripting wise. years um what was i looking for oh this not playables um wait why why did it bring me back here okay in layer index but i don't want to assume a layer index zero even though yeah all right fine It's like if you see you can pass negative one here in fact and it's not gonna give me intellisense because I gotta finish this um, oh see okay so current duration of state loop is the state looping I need to be able to change that normalize time speed can I just get the name why can't I get the name why do I have to check the name <laughs> it's like it's like weird sometimes their API's are just weird I just I question I question why would it be so hard if you I can get the length of the animation plane? Can't I get the name of it? The name of the state? Okay. Hmm. <laughs> I'm just going to say... Is the state open? The door opening, door open animation. So right now it shouldn't be. Uh, debug dialog. And then current state length or duration. Then I hit play, and it should, if it changes instantly, awesome. If it doesn't, I have to, like, wait until the next update, I think? So I just want to wanna give that a spin. Um, let me look at the console. Clear, I don't care about any of that. do the thing yeah so yeah actually I don't I don't know I'm...
I have a funny feeling that uh, that that is name function is not right. <laughs> yeah, see, look at this wonkiness. Why? What the actual thing looks like is pause open and we're on layer base layer so it's like what it wants me to say is should be layer dot name base dot idle it's like why 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 I'm already passing in the layer I'm already passing in the layer here Layer index. So then, why do I have to put the layer name too? I, 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 I. But because I'm not sure, I don't know specifically if it's if it wants me to say base or base layer. Can I even? Yeah, I guess I feel like the whole name is base layer. Dumb. I don't know. Something about their state machine hash. I don't know. It's like it's redundant saying base layer and zero. Zero is base layer. <laughs> All right. So this. I don't know. The current state. What it starts out at, it starts out in idle, which is what it should be. I just want to... <laughs> I'm just being super... I just want all the debugging information. Because I'm not sure how this works, and I want to know how this works after we're done. Just do that. So I expect to see some trues and falses, uh, some of some of both here. Um, it shouldn't all be false. Uh. All right. Let me see here. It is base layer idle. Okay, yeah, see, it's still, it's idle both times. Both times I do that. See, this is, what, this is another thing that I just... It's just, uh, it's just kind of painstaking. I don't know why they do it this way. So specifically what I have to do is base layer dot idle. So like, it's like I'm kind of limiting. Like I don't want to hard code base layer in case some, in case some animations, some animators I use have multiple layers. None of them do right now. I don't think I will ever make one that does, but I don't want to be limited like that, but. So then it's like I have to do this. State we started in.
get, like, I don't suppose I can say get current layer. Get layer name. No, for the layer index. Um, just gonna assume layer zero for now. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll kind of fix it up later. So it's like this. Um, yeah, see, I can't get it. I can't get the state that we start in. Oh, is it this? Oh, no. State name hash, but... And then tag hash. Why can't you just tell me the state name? <laughs> Surely there's got to be something about this. Unity animator current state name. This is five years ago, but oh god, this guy did not have a good time. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of how I feel right now. Oh. Maybe I do it this way. String to hash and then compare the hashes. Oh, what? You can do this? And get current animator clip info? That's exactly what I wanted. I mean, maybe. Uh, animator dot get current animator clip info. Can I just say, like, name? No. <laughs> get hash code, get length. I mean, I want to find out. Hmm. I feel like something. Uh... Oh, oh. Really? See, I don't I don't know. I don't know why there is so much
Uh, I don't love this, but... Animation clip. Clip we started with. If clip we started with, then um, so basically. Oh, this is a little. This is a little weird to. more than I really wanted to do. Maybe more than needs to be done, but... So it's like, we need to cache this, play, and then wait for the animator to actually play it. Because it's, it's not synchronous. That's fine. Um, but since we don't get a callback, then we have to, like... We have to check, okay, are we waiting for the clip to change? And then did it change? Then we take the new clip. Um, that time. get rid of that so it stops checking it. Now we actually set the time. Now we actually know the end time. And then we just keep checking for the end time. Yeah. Um, yikes. I don't like this. I don't want to assume the layer. And I don't even know what... It just gives you clip... Clip info... In the current state of the given layer. Why would there be more than one animation clips? I've never I've never had an, a state that had multiple animation clips. If we ever have that, I'm gonna need to deal with it. But maybe I just won't have that. Um If wait until done, uh, I'm doing this because while we're waiting for the clip to actually change, we don't want to like actually end out of the state. We just we want to stay in here until the animator decided to switch clips, and when he did. We find out the length of the new clip, and then we know when we need to end out of the state. For that matter, I want to. I noticed that the door was. I noticed that the door was like looping. It would like open and then reopen. I, I don't want to do that. Can I can I tell it to not? How do you tell it to not do that? Um, Unity animator state loop. How to loop it? Oh, it's not really grammar, but. Uh, Mm. 
where is this? to like I have to find it in the project and then oh and then say don't loop huh all right all right maybe maybe that okay so let me just add some debugs not log warning just log So, currently in state in clip, waiting for to switch to Then when it does, animator switched to uh, this lasts. Very quick. Oh, 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 oh. It was very quick because I didn't actually. I didn't say wait until end. Did I? Wait until done. It's not going to make much of a difference because the door opens so fast. But. Also, yeah, I noticed that. I was able to trigger the door from standing over it. That's not good. The collision's not quite right there. It's also not that hard to fix. Come on. Alright, I'm seeing an error in the log. What happened? What happened? I didn't clear that out. Huh? Oh, jeez. Was there nothing returned from this? It might be because the current, the current, whatchamacallit, didn't have any whoosie what's it's. Uh. So the clip we started with could actually... So this isn't actually, it's, it's uh, finish time equal to mathf.infinity. Is this okay? I'm not sure if I can compare against this reliably.
just start that out as no uh, animation clip clips. Animator clip info. I guess. So it's probably not going to fire. Let me just check against if it's wise to uh, uh, compare to math f infinity. Is it safe to do that? I just, I don't know if it will work, because comparing floating points is not good. Yeah, I'm not seeing you get any, anything to work with there. But okay, so the door, since it's not animated, doesn't have a current clip. That's fine. Um, We just now know that until the animator decides to switch states, we have a finish time. since I can trigger it from up here. Oh, now I can't. Did that work? No, I got an error again. Currently a null clip waiting for that. Oh, okay, yeah, that was an error, but we kept going. Okay, good. So at least one update happened where it still didn't switch. You know, I mean, I mean, you know. I hate doing all this, uh, but just for safety. But I think we're good. All right. <laughs> okay. So that did that did a thing. Now the, the sequence actually does the very simple thing of animating the door using its open animation at its whatever time is it's, it's supposed to. We didn't manipulate the time at all. So whatever time 
however long the animation is supposed to play, wait until done, and then when it's done, we transition to the outside world. This now, this teleport thing is not fully implemented, and that might be what we do next time. Um, because it does this pixelate transition, but it's not doing this wipe color. Actually, it might just be because I didn't have alpha on. <laughs> but I, I kind of forget what this logic is. I need to... Uh... So that might not do anything, but... But all right, so if we want to open the door, uh, eh, eh. right, and then next we have to uh, make it so that he knows he's outside. All right, so the door opens and he teleports. That's our simple little uh, thing. I don't really like that. That's like the Super Mario World pixelation thing. I just did it as like an example. I didn't. Uh, yeah. Let me change this so that maybe what if, if there's no, it should just do a simple fade out. So. I think that's just a... I don't know, I'm gonna have to fix some of that. But anyway, <laughs> so that's kind of what I was going for. <laughs> we had things like RPG Maker events, and this is like my kind of take on them. Event page, event trigger conditions, uh, and then event steps. Really, this kind of wants to be at least like a reorderable list, but I couldn't get that working last time I tried. Like it was just being very finicky with like the serialized objects and everything. Um, so this is what it is. If I want to like change, uh, for example, if I wanted to change, like reorder them, this can move that up. It's not not a great way. I should just be able to like drag them. Also that, but <laughs> that doesn't mean anything. Um, yeah, I can delete. Oh, can I? Yeah. Okay, just did that. Did I actually remove it from the prefab? No. All right, I just have to re-add that back. Whoops. I'm editing the prefab when I do that. That's not. But I think I have a copy of it. No, okay, this guy automatically updated with it. Just add that back. Add an animate step. We want to change state. We want to say open. Nope, nope, what? Get out of here. Oh, now I did that by mistake. I can use my own games editor, right? I know how to do that. Wait until done, move it up. There we go. And so now, I didn't just, I didn't mess it up, right? I can still use it, right? <laughs> so open up, go, yeah. All right, I'll just, I'll fix that transition stuff effect later. Um, all right, okay. So we see a little simple beginning of this sort of thing happening. Very primitive sort of event sequencing system. The code for it, I could go through it another time. There'll be plenty of time for that. We'll be spending a lot of time with this, making various types of events. And then again, the point is to be able to script stuff in the editor and without having to write custom mono behaviors for like every single event in the game, every single sequence. There's gonna be a lot of them, a lot of like NPC dialogue, conversations, um, sequences where the like, characters move around and 
story like sequences a lot of there's gonna be a lot of that i don't want to write like c sharp for all that that's just that's gonna be excessive and bug prone this at least should be a way of of uh, uh streamlining that so we'll see but um that's all i got for now i'll, I'll work i'll tweak a couple of these funky things that we saw and then come back with something else next time.